Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So before we get started on the video, I just want to let you guys know that for all your tea sipping needs, make sure you guys go on to lovelytea.net or amazon.com backslash shops backslash lovely tea. Thank you so much for supporting my line and enjoy the video. All right, you guys, so I want to come on here and do some podcasting today. I'm trying to make up for some lost time. And I know one of the most highly requested videos I've been getting over and over again, a lot of people want me to talk about the whole Asia Argento situation. So as you guys all know, I talked about her briefly when I did my video on Anthony Bourdain, who I was a big fan of. If you guys have not watched my Anthony Bourdain video, it will be linked down below. And in that video, I mentioned his girlfriend, who is a practicing witch. Her name is Asia Argento. And basically, she was not only dating Anthony Bourdain, but she's also really good friends with Rose McGowan. And if you guys have been on this channel for any length of time, you guys know how I feel about Rose McGowan. I think the woman is full of shit. I'm not a fan of hers. Fuck her and her damn rose thorns. at this past year's Cannes Film Festival, where she basically let the whole world know that Harvey Weinstein raped her. And with her coming out, she became really close to Rose McGowan. And if you've been on this channel for any length of time, you guys know how I feel about Rose McGowan. I'm not a fan of hers. I will never be a fan of hers. I don't give a damn how much her rose thorns call themselves trying to attack me and cuss me out with all their feminist propaganda. I'm not a fan of Rose McGowan. She's been talking nonstop about Anthony Bourdain. Now she's coming out with these, you know, letters trying to defend his girlfriend you know she's really involving herself but a lot of people are tying his death to possibly Harvey Weinstein because we all know he's very powerful and the fact that he was dating a woman who basically you know helped to set the ball rolling on the rape allegations against Harvey Weinstein so what's going on now is that basically this woman Asia Argento is back in the news and what happened is that a few weeks ago, a young man came out and basically stated that Asia Argento had sex with him when he had just turned 17. His name is Jimmy Bennett, and she's literally known this little boy since he's about seven years old. He even acted in a movie with her where he played her son. And um, so initially when it came out, she denied this. She claimed, you know, it was false. She was being falsely accused. She even had the nerve to shift blame on Anthony Bourdain, who died back in June, and she claimed that Anthony Bourdain is the one who paid this young man over $300,000. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this TMZ clip, and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. She is saying Anthony Bourdain paid the settlement, uh, the $380,000. Second thing she did is she denied that she had sex with the boy. Here's what she said. She said, I am deeply shocked and hurt by having read that news that is absolutely false. I have never had any sexual relationship with Bennett. Mm. This is uh, Jimmy Bennett, who is now 22 years old. Um, this is after they had sex. She is mm. denying they had sex. But here's what's interesting. We got text messages between Bourdain and Argento. And in one of the text messages, she seems to contradict yeah. the fact that they had no sex. Har Harvey does seem to contradict that. She mentions that, she, she says to Anthony Bourdain, I was not raped, but I was frozen. He was on top of me after he told me I had been his sexual fantasy since he was 12. It seems to suggest that they had sex by claiming she wasn't raped, but she was frozen. All right, so you guys just saw that TMZ clip, and a lot of things bother me with that because shortly after that clip came out, Jimmy was like, okay, so now she's trying to paint me out to be a liar. He then, in turn, posted pictures of him in bed with Asia Argento, um, of him and Asia Argento in bed when he was clearly underage. And so once this came out, at that point, Asia Argento is looking suspect as hell, and a lot of people are giving Rose McGowan the side eye because up until then, she was quiet. She was telling people to wait for the facts. You know, she was treating this situation totally different than how she treated men who were being accused in this whole Me Too movement. Because let's not forget, when Morgan Freeman's shit came out and he was being accused of sexual harassment, Rose McGowan went in. 
Okay, she clearly took to Twitter and this is what she said. So she took to Twitter during the whole Morgan Freeman situation and she basically said, Hi everyone, I know your idols are fallen. I know it hurts to be disappointed, but imagine if that person that you thought you knew from his image sexually harassed you. Stay the course. We will be better for this socially. The conversation must be had. And then she included a hashtag of Morgan Freeman's name. So it's funny that when Morgan Freeman was accused and other men were accused, she didn't care about due process. You know what I'm saying? She went straight for the juggler. She was telling people to open their eyes and stop, you know, basically worshiping these people. You know, yeah, it's disappointing when your idols fall. But then when it comes to somebody who's very close to her in the Me Too movement, because let's not forget a few months ago, her and this crazy bitch, Asia Argento, were on the E! Network crying and sharing their Harvey Weinstein rape stories. I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. I remember, I blocked everything. I remember. I blocked. I remember only the first. The second time, because there was a second time. I don't even remember. I remember arriving and leaving. I remember the room. You blacked uh, out? Not, not, yes, I blacked out. I remember running, and outside there was one of the women, his assistant, she now is speaking. She looked at me, and I know it was She, ah. she said, um, I'm sorry, I remember. And I never replied. All right, so you guys just saw a snippet of that E! video of them trying to swap their stories. And like I said, I've never felt either one of them. These two bitches are the most disingenuous bitches I've ever seen, point blank, period. First and foremost, like I said, to the real victims, to people who are sexually harassed, you know, I hope you take no offense to this. These allegations happened when these women were of age. So let's not act like they were 13 or 14, okay? So both these women claimed to be raped by Harvey Weinstein, but yet and still they continued relationships with him. They also took payouts from Harvey Weinstein. So just understanding that alone made me look at this movement as a farce. And I'm not saying that there's not true victims or people who are really victimized because there's true victims every day. But most real victims don't continue fucking with the person who's raping them. They don't continue working with them. They don't continue doing TV shows and movies with them. Now all of a sudden here come all these allegations. So I'm not buying either one of them. And another thing I found really disturbing, like I talked about in my Anthony Bourdain video, is that we all know that Asia Argento is a practicing witch, okay? And I remember when he died, all of her witch friends came together and was saying, you know, let's conjure up these really powerful spells. Let's protect our sister. And another thing that really bothers me with his death is I look more into his girlfriend. This chick is a witch. And it's like of all the people he could be dating, he's dating a witch. But just everything is just weird. It's like how come when, you know, somebody dies in Hollywood, there's like just all this weird shit that just comes along with their death. It's like literally a whole coven of witches were leading prayers for Anthony Bourdain's girlfriend and Anthony Bourdain. It was like the weirdest shit I saw on Twitter. You know, but now that she's being accused of, you know, molesting and raping this young boy and grooming him and sleeping with him, all of a sudden her coven of witches are quiet. Where's all this red magic to protect your sister? Where's all this backing up of Asia Argento? Now everybody's trying to distance themselves. And today, Rose McGowan is speaking about this situation. She went on Good Morning America. And basically now she's being the phony that I knew she was. So basically now she's trying to hurt and distance herself. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news clip and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Yeah, Cecilia, Rose McGowan says the accusations against her friend and fellow activists left her fearing everything the Me Too movement stands for could be in jeopardy. But after allegedly being presented with incriminating text messages, the actress is now speaking out against Argento and calling for the movement to evolve. Rose McGowan and Asia Argento became friends and allies as leading voices of the Me Too movement. Imagine how tired we are of it. And by we, I mean most of the world that has been assaulted or attacked. But this morning, McGowan is seemingly distancing herself after she says she saw text messages between Argento and McGowan's partner, Rain Dove. In those text messages first reported by TMZ, Argento allegedly confesses that she slept with former child actor Jimmy Bennett, who she starred with in 2004's The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things. 
Argento, who publicly denied ever sleeping with Bennett, also allegedly informed Rain Dove in text messages that she had been receiving unsolicited nude photos of Bennett since he was 12 years old, but had not informed the authorities or told him to stop sending the photos. In a statement acknowledging the new information, McGowan writes about Argento, It's sad to lose a friend connection, but what's even more sad is what happened to Jimmy Bennett. Many people believe that because we have been close in each other's lives over the past year, that perhaps I am affiliated with this incident or being complicit. I am not. McGowan said she was the one who urged Rain Dove to turn over Argento's text to police. McGowan goes on to say, I've been extremely humbled by this event. There absolutely should be no leeway or tolerance for sexual assault. Hard stop. None. However, as allies to the victim and voyeurs of an event, we should find a better way to balance support of the victim with due process for the accused. This is a sharp turn for McGowan, who has often publicly advocated a swift and harsh penalty for anyone accused of sexual harassment or assault. In the fall of 2017, Argento was one of the first women to publicly accuse Harvey Weinstein of sexual assault. McGowan also became one of Weinstein's most vocal accusers after she accused him of raping her in a hotel room years before. McGowan finished her statement advising Argento to do the right thing and be honest, writing, be the person you wish Harvey could have been. And McGowan says this incident has caused her to evolve and realize that those accused are the friends, parents, and family members of other people. She's now calling on the Me Too movement to use this as a moment to become stronger, more compassionate, more aware, and more organized. A lot of questions. All right, so you guys just saw that video. So in my personal opinion, I feel like Rose McGowan and especially Asia Argento, they are good-ass manipulators. They know how to manipulate people. They know how to play these little games. Like I said, it's funny that, you know, her whole disposition has changed now that it's her friend. When Harvey Weinstein was accused of being a sexual predator um, and other men in this whole Me Too movement, it was off with their heads. There was no due process. There was no, oh, well, let's just sit back and see how all this plays out. But now when it comes to her friend, now all of a sudden Rose McGowan has changed her tune. Let's not forget when it first broke, Rose McGowan was telling people, we don't know the facts yet, please be gentle. And was even hinting that the accuser was doing this, you know, for like financial gain. And even when you go to Jimmy Bennett's Instagram page, because I was on there yesterday, he's still getting attacked. He's getting attacked by a lot of people, saying he's an attention whore, he's just looking for a payday. It's funny that, you know, all victims must be believed unless they're your friends. You know, now that it's your friend under the spotlight, now it's like, oh, now she's talking all this due process bullshit. Um, she's saying that when she found out about the text messages, she encouraged Rain Dove to say something. But my thing is, when did she first learn about this? You know, you mean to tell me that all of this came out and then Rain Dove finally said something to Rose McGowan? I believe they've been knowing about this and they've been trying to hide it as long as they could. And now that the shit has hit the fan, now they're all trying to distance themselves. Because my thing is this, if Rain Dove has been had these text messages and has known about this relationship between Asia Argento and uh, Jimmy Bennett and Asia Argento, then my issue is this. Why did Rain Dove not go straight to the police as soon as she got that information? Why did it take Rose McGowan to coerce her to go and turn that information in? So I feel like they've been known this situation, but they've been trying to hide it, hoping that the little boy wouldn't come out, who's now a man, hoping that he wouldn't come out and they could just keep on with this whole Me Too movement. But now everything is crumbling in their face, you know what I'm saying? It's funny that now she's in favor of due process, you know what I mean, when it comes to her friend and she's walking on eggshells. But when it came to all these other people who were accused, many of whom were accused and later found not guilty and have been reinstated back to their jobs. Not ordinary fandom with sons. It's it's deep. Yeah. So when you look back at the series and your experience on the show, like how do you see it? contract to be leaving with 90,301 either one a respectable amount let's find out which way this swings I, I really just want to take a minute and I want to say that I am so appreciative to be standing here right now and I want to thank you the Walking Dead community for all of your support these last couple of months you know 
This show is not just a job to me. This is, this is a vital part of my life, you know, and this has been a sanctuary. These last seven years we've been here, this has been with me through, through good times and bad times, and I have so much gratitude to you, the fans, and, and, and the producers, and the amazing cast of both of these shows, you know, for allowing me to come here and, and be a part of this community every week. This is what this is. This is a community. And, you know, it, we're, we're on the precipice of a lot of changes on both Walking Dead shows in the coming weeks and months. And I, I'm so looking forward to going. Now, you guys just saw me post that video clip of Chris Hardwick um, and his tearful return back to the Talking Dead. This is a man that's been hosting for years in Hollywood. He also started The Nerdist. Um, he had been doing his thing for a long time, and then his ex-girlfriend was mad, got in her feelings, wrote an essay, claimed abuse and all types of stuff, and just because of this whole Me Too movement and this whole Time's Up movement, it's like nobody's really going in and truly investigating these claims. They're literally firing people and then going behind and trying to, you know, put the pieces together. After AMC and all the other companies, Candom and Hollywood, he was out of work. And then come to find out he did nothing wrong. The allegations were false. So a lot of people are being affected by this Me Too movement that do not deserve it. You know, Harvey Weinstein definitely deserves it because there is proof that he did rape other women. He sexually harassed people. There's so much proof against him. So this is not taken up for the Harvey Weinsteins of the world. But there were a lot of innocent men that also got caught up in all of this bullshit. And we can all thank Rose McGowan for that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm really glad that, you know, Chris was able to get his job back but so many other people are still out of work and they are swearing up and down that they did nothing wrong so like I said it's funny that she doesn't have the same energy when it comes to her friend especially now that it's been proven that her friend did sleep with a 17 year old boy so where's all this energy why aren't you going off on your friend why are you not calling for her head on a platter like you've been doing for all these men so I think this whole situation with Asia Argento and Rose McGowan, it's definitely going to damage the Me Too movement, okay? Because how can you be the spearhead of this movement? So much so that Anthony Bourdain really backed her up and he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Harvey Weinstein, you know, blasting him and blasting Hillary and blasting all these sex rings and everything else. And I still, to this day, do not feel that Anthony Bourdain's suicide was really a suicide. I feel like that man was killed when I look at everything and all the research I've done. I don't believe it was a suicide, but that's a whole nother video. But like I said, this woman needs to be arrested and she needs to be prosecuted just like they're demanding of Harvey Weinstein and all these other guys, okay? There was no sympathy. There was no due process speech from Morgan Freeman. And if Morgan Freeman is guilty of what they're accusing him of, then he also should face legal consequences as well. But my thing is, like I always say on this channel, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If we're going to say that, you know, these men should be charged and prosecuted, then she is a woman who knew better. Because this woman was in her 30s, sleeping with a 17-year-old. She literally groomed him. And then they're saying that he'd been sending her unsolicited, unwanted, you know, nude pictures from the time he was 12 years old. If they were unwanted, then why didn't you go straight to the police? Because if somebody sends me some nudes, I'm going to say, you know what? I don't want to have no parts of this. This shit is not going to come back on me 5, 10 years from now. Fuck that shit. Arrest his little ass. Because now he's harassing me. Okay, that's what adults, that's what people who are clear thinking, who are not involved in fuckery, that's what they do. She should have contacted the parents, she should have contacted the authorities, but I believe that young boy was sending her those nudes because she told him to send him the nudes. She had been grooming him and grooming him until he was old enough to where she could pounce, okay? And to me, Asia Argento is a demonic ass witch, okay? Everything about her vibe is just dark and sinister. For Anthony Bourdain allegedly killed himself, she was wearing a shirt top my fuck everybody and she was seen hugged up with another man even though she was in a relationship with Anthony so it's just been a lot of little things about her that's just really dark and then we all know who her father is um he's one of the huge horror movie producers in Italy and she starred in a lot of really disturbing movies so I think you know she's been through a lot of you know MK Ultra type shit probably growing up but that does not excuse what she did to this young man and regardless you know people are saying he's just looking for attention he just wants a payday it's funny that that's the first thing people say when it's a young man who's been assaulted by a woman but if the roles were reversed people would not be going to a female's instagram page and telling her that she's just looking for attention she's just looking for money you know you liked it you should be happy you should be happy that you lost your virginity to a celebrity you know the comments i saw on his page were just sickening and i understand why he deleted most of his pictures he's also since deleted himself off of twitter as well so 
you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this, you know, plays out with this whole Asia Argento situation. But right now, she's been removed off of X Factor Italy. Um, a lot of people are shunning her currently. Like I said, her whole witch coven is very, very quiet. I haven't seen any fucking red magic spells to protect her. So, obviously, they're giving her the side eye as well. So, anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire disturbing situation concerning Asia Argento finally being caught up all of the proof coming out that she did in fact sleep with Jimmy Bennett and then how do you feel about you know Rose McGowan basically trying to you know distance herself from Asia but also changing her whole stance where now she's talking all this shit about waiting and you know pro and, and due process and all this bullshit but when it was men being accused there was none of that so let's go ahead and talk about her hypocrisy as well let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.